Unlock the Heartbeat of Humanity, How Taylor Swift Captured the World's Pulse. Today, we're going to unlock the secrets behind the global sensation Taylor Swift. How does her music fuel your emotions and connects around the world? We're, we're about to explore the magic of her melodies from her heart-thumping beats to her tear-jerking ballads. So, just uh, sit back and watch and decode the swift effect on the world. How do you do it? <laughs> What's the secret? Thank you, Taylor. Give us some tips. Now I'm embarrassed. Put them in bullet points. <laughs> Give us some directions to follow. As you know, I've been a massive fan of yours for years and years and years and loved all too well, so I wanted to get into the nitty gritty of that too. Oh, thanks. Did you always want to direct? No. Uh, I always wanted to tell stories. I have always written stories, poetry, um, songs. I think this just kind of grew out of a natural extension of that storytelling. And I don't think I ever necessarily thought that it would be something I would sort of be allowed to do until I actually had enough experience to kind of say, hey, you know what, I want to step out and do this on my own and see what it's like. And the more I did it, the more I loved it. Did you have ever had like experiences where you knew you could do a better job than the person who was actually doing it? <clears throat> Whoa, we're just going right in, aren't we? There were times when this actually came out of um, necessity. Like I, I was writing my videos for years and I had a video that was a very specific concept I had written, which was that I wanted to be prosthetically turned into a man and live my life as a man. And I wanted a female director to direct it. And the few that I reached out to were fortunately booked. You know, we like it when women work. Yeah. Um, but none of the female directors that I wanted to direct it could do it. So I was like, well, I could do it. Maybe. And then when I when I did direct, I just was I just thought this is actually more fulfilling than I ever could have imagined. Wow. So it was almost by accident that you Yeah, it was like happenstance and, and now I've done I think I've, I've directed about ten music videos and now one short. So I'm kind of I'm just sort of inching my way along towards taking on more responsibility. Yeah. It's time to super change your life. We're cracking the code to unlock your full potential with a three-step master pattern that I have dubbed Energy Connections. We're moving way beyond the surface and tap into what truly fuels our human needs. That's our beliefs, our emotions, and our intentions. Next, physical communication. It's about small action steps with a massive impact. It can change things. It can transform things. I'm talking about the moves that shake the ground under our feet. And finally, resilience and growth. You'll get tools and tips, not just about bouncing back, but bouncing forward when life spins out of control. Plus, discover why the best victories are won when you're on a team and working together. Let's watch and listen what she says about physical communication. Do you think that it kind of plays into the myth of art and suffering and how they have to exist side by side? I think he, that character, sort of taps into it, that or thinks that, I completely disagree with it. I mean, you have to write something and be completely on their, their side with that point of view. I, totally, I well, it's a valid point of view and so many people really, really believe that. Yeah, but then can, there can be a lot of bullshit about it too. So I don't believe that you have to be, like my sets are like happy, happy places. Yeah. And I'm a really happy person. You are a happy person and you write really dark poignant, shit, sad yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> poignant, sad, uh, just dark shit. I You're like, yeah. I think it's really interesting, um, the idea of, of channeling something very dark and sad and somber and about grief and all these difficult things, but having like a lovely, great time doing it. Yeah. It's really strange because I don't think that anybody would imagine you know, you guys telling this story or even on the short film, like me and Dylan and Sadie telling a story about just 
life altering heartbreak and but on set we're just like oh this is so fun that take was amazing <laughs> exactly that's that's the funny thing about it like colin and brendan had a, had a chat at the start you know do we need to keep space between each other do we need to enact it in real life and they both were so happy that they both agreed that no they're just gonna have fun <laughs> And act it. <laughs> um, it's just like that part is a myth that you have to suffer to make good art about suffering or that you have to suffer in order to make art in general. Like, yes, it is a cathartic thing, but oftentimes I think that writing about your pain or your suffering, it sort of gets out the poison. Yeah, it helps. If, it does. Yeah, because as I said, this, this script was written in a sort of place of sadness and, mm -hmm. and heartbreak. But even the evening of, you know, having finished those few pages is like, that's pretty good stuff yeah. about my heartbreak and sad <laughs> <laughs> suffering, like, which is great to be able to have that. Listen. And I'm not sure if that's an age thing or, or, or what it is. Like, do you feel like your songwriting is different? Even if you're talk talking about a heartbreak song, are you different in that writing now as opposed to how you were when you were 22? Yes, I definitely feel more free to create now. And I'm making, I'm making more albums at a more rapid pace than I ever did before because I think the more art you create, hopefully the less pressure you put on yourself. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If you keep making stuff, you just keep making stuff and hopefully you get better at it. It doesn't yeah. have to be so, you don't have to belabor it and polish the doorknob so long that you forget to open the door. Because I mean, I, I, I'm not really, I haven't really done that, but I like the idea. I used to do that in, when I was writing plays, mm -hmm. like bang, out, bang out another one and another one. And there's less pressure that way, I guess. Yeah, I think it's just a phase I'm in right now. I, I might be in a different phase in two months. I have no idea. It's just recently I've found that the more things I make, the more things I make and the happier I am. Yeah. And everybody's different. And, and there are people who put an album out every you know, five years and it's brilliant and that's the way that they work. And there's, I have full respect for that, but I am happier when I'm making things more, more often. So do you carve out time every day to be productive in that way? No, it kind of, it kind of pushes through without asking permission. You know, these, we were talking about like involuntary ideas, like when you were saying, oh, and, and then it was it surprised me when he went into the pub and he didn't have a finger. Um, I have songs come to me like that. I have, you know, ideas for a story I would want to tell come through like that. And do songs and do lyrics and tunes come at the same time? Yeah. Do you have to be strumming or? No. Sometimes it's a fragment of a melody that is that has a lyric on it already. Sometimes it's just a line and I'll write it down and I'll use it later. Um, sometimes it's a melody that I have to go to the piano and then record and remember it. But it's the more that I'm writing, the more those ideas come. So even That's on a day like this, when you've got lots of stuff to do like this, in the afternoon something could come Totally, through. yeah. Wow. It's only been like that for me for like the past six or seven years, so that's why I say I think it comes with age. Yeah. But I don't really know why I've been making more things recently, but I'm just trying not to question it because I, I kind of like it. I want it to keep going. And there's a part of writing I think that we don't understand. Yeah, completely. So I don't want to jinx it by being like, huh, this is all me. I'm just writing. I, I, don't, I don't know why. Yeah. I'm just going with it. Talking of which, Midnight's yes. a new record. They call them records, albums? Yes, we respond to both. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you're going to, or you have directed, you're going to direct like 11 videos for the, is so that true? So the videos for this one are really fun because I wanted to do different things than I did with the short. I wanted to kind of, exp I have this scene in a, a video for a song called Antihero where I have my future funeral of if I were to have kids <laughs> and those kids were to be terrible. Um, fighting <laughs> sorry, over. sorry, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. We wanted to shoot it in like a very different style than I've shot things in the past because I just ultimately, I want to tell the story in a, in a way that's interesting for people, but I also want to learn and I want to kind of experiment with how to shoot scenes. And Yeah, and there's a great puking scene in that. Thank you so much. I love I worked lot. so hard on that. It's <laughs> I might steal that. Throwing up on myself. Yeah, but it's blue, isn't it? The it's puke? blue, yeah. The blue glitter in that video was a metaphor for, like, at one point I bleed blue glitter. It's supposed to be midnight blue glitter. And then at one point I'm opening it, I cut through an egg and it's it's glitter and so it's supposed to be a metaphor for like I bleed glitter I'm not I'm not normal there's something wrong with me I'm not a person I don't belong I don't fit in anywhere let's watch and listen what she says about 
resilience, and growth. Oh, I love that you went extreme first. Because I think I did too with a short that I did where it's like, I'm just going to give you all my feelings of despair and heartbreak with my first short. In All Too Well. Yes. Yeah. So so talk me through the process with that. Like, you wrote it knowing you were going to direct it? I wrote it knowing I wanted it to be a short. I wanted to treat it completely differently than I'd ever treated a music video. I wanted to use a new cinematographer DP that I'd never used before, Rena Yang. I wanted to shoot it on 35 millimeter and... I wrote it with Sadie Sink and Dylan O'Brien in mind, which I heard that you wrote Banshees with your full cast. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much cast. I wrote it for Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson and Barry Kogan and Kerry Condon. Those are the four main players. Like that's, that had to have been amazing to kind of know what colors you wanted to paint with. Yeah, you kind of, I guess, write to, the, to their strengths, but kind of give them a little leeway to bring some strange new things to it. I think it's a new Colin Farrell performance. I think he's it's quite lovely in it. Amazing. <laughs> it's so incredible. Um, so you loved Dylan and Sadie's work beforehand or you knew them and knew their voices? How, how did that work? I'd never met either one of them, but I had seen their work and I'd kind of thought, you know how sometimes you see an actor and you see what they've, the work they've done, but you can kind of see how it could have gone further? Yeah and you can kind of see flickers of how they could really be excellent in, in, a, in a part they hadn't been cast as. Yeah. I had seen Sadie in Stranger Things and I thought she has such a presence, she has such an empathy to her. And you can just see micro emotions flash across her face in a way that I, I just don't usually see in performances. It's rare. And I thought she's never been a romantic lead and I wonder if she'd be interested in playing a young woman who goes through her first, you know, catastrophic, cataclysmic heartbreak. Yeah, <laughs> and she did it so brilliantly. She really, really did. Why are you so pissed off? I'm not pissed off, I said I was pissed off. Did you write it, then, then meet her, or meet her and then hear her voice, or what? I wrote it and I wrote the manuscript and I had you know, kind of visual references of what 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 type of art direction and the type, the way I wanted to film it and the colors I wanted to use. There's a sort of a palette, you know, I sort of put together like a, you know, a PDF of what I wanted to make because I really, I'd never made a short before. And so I'm in the mode where I'm trying to persuade these two actors who I don't have backups for in my mind to do the project yeah. and trying to um, convince them. It didn't take any convincing because they just both said yes immediately when I reached out, but I, I texted them directly. Cool. And then we talked a lot, had a lot of conversations. I had them both over, they met each other. And then a couple uh -huh. months later we were on set. Wow, and so this, the script was like 20 pages or 30 pages? Or yeah, whatever. it was. And it had dialogue and all that? It had dialogue. We had actually, I'd scripted out uh, some scenes of them falling in love the scene of them uh, falling apart, breaking up, and then I'd had this argument. And I'm really interested in this argument. So the argument was the one that we ended up keeping as a scene. I knew I wanted one scene to play out, and I didn't know which one it was going to be. So play, play out without music. Without music, because I thought that it was just important to get a very potent glimpse into their dynamic, and I didn't know if that would come through best with them falling in love, breaking up, or fighting, it turned out the fight was where <laughs> we saw the most of who these people are and what the problems are. I actually had a fucking blast. Now, now this is the night, now we're doing this. Awesome, so fucking awesome. So could the song have stopped at any of those points? Yeah, we have it in the edit. I mean, we have it, I mean, we have it in art. It's on film somewhere, but yeah. we, didn't, we didn't put it in because I just thought, I want to tell this whole story, but I want there to be one really you know, portal glimpse into their life where we stop the music because the music does a pretty good job of explaining the arc. And just shooting that, how, how did it go? It ended up being one, sh one shot, one, you know, we had Rena with the Steadicam and we were just gonna shoot it as many times as we needed to to get the covers that we needed, but it turned out that it was one of those magic takes where we don't cut till probably 85, 90% through that scene. Wow. My producer and I were just at the monitor, just clutching each other. Oh, I love, and just, I love it when that happens. Just, you know, like, uh, so it was, it was fantastic. And I think you strike me as someone who has a lot of trust in your actors. Yeah. And that was, I think, that was that leap of faith moment 
of putting them in a room and they're having to fill in all the blanks of this chemistry and um, we had talked at length about the dynamics of this fight and it, it really comes down to the fact that she does not feel seen within this relationship and on some level he doesn't either because both of these people are essentially saying you don't understand where I'm coming from yeah. and you can't understand where I'm coming from. Well, what, one of the things I loved about it, sorry for interrupting, no, was no. it did feel completely balanced. I think the song mostly is sort of from her point of view, but that scene was, was equal. I, I think so too. I was quite so surprised too. in a lovely way that that was, that was there. Hey, 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 come on, come on, come on. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. And so was that all your dialogue? Was it partly improvised or? It was how partly improvised. I had written out uh, that fight with the same arc and it being about the same thing. We had just talked about it so many times about what this fight is about and what sort of things they would be saying to each other. It's a testament to them as just brilliant actors and collaborators that they went in there. And there were some things that, that, that Dylan would just blurt out or that Sadie would say, and I'd just be sitting at the monitor going, oh my God, oh my God, we are keeping that in the, the, the cut. Um, so is the one we see, was that like first take or only take? It was the first take. Wow. And then we did one or, one or two more, but that was the one where I was like, you know, if you have it, you have it. Yeah. And yeah. I, knew, I knew we would use that one for the most part for the predominant length of that scene because it just did everything I wanted it to do. <laughs> and is it moments like that that you felt m made it a short film and took it away from the usual sort of music video milieu? It was moments like that and it was the fact that it has a, a narrative arc. The chapters in the short film are there because, you know, it has chapters like the breaking point, the first crack in the glass. Those end up being chapters in a book that she one day writes. So it's it's structured narratively um, in a way that I felt had to be different from any music video that I've made. It couldn't be a music video where I'm singing the lyrics and you're seeing some flashbacks and flash forwards and whatever. Yeah. I wanted people to be in that world with these two characters. And they are. Now there you have it. Let's wrap this up with something that you can truly use. Every day we've got choices. Connect with your heart. Talk with passion and purpose. And don't give up when things get tough. Watch as the world starts to change and transform in your favor. Together, we're not just dreaming, we're doing. Let's craft the quality of life that we truly deserve. Keep connecting and moving your energy differently. I'm Kerry Ruff.